Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on vertical translations in functions. Before we cross over to current, let's define a vertical translation. A vertical translation is an upward or downward movement of a graph function from where it has been drawn. Let us now join Karen as she explains this in more detail. Remember, a translation is defined as a movement of every point of a shape or object, a constant distance in the specified direction. Okay, so here we have the graph of the function f of x equals x squared. On this transparency, I have traced out f of x in a different color. Can you predict what will happen if I slide the transparency upwards? Is this what you mean? It now looks like I have two different graphs of the same shape on top of each other. Perfect. Our challenge is to decide what to do to the equation of the original function, f of x, to describe this translation. Now one way of finding out is to look again what happens to each of the points on the graph. Let's look at the transparency again. Cindy, please can you highlight the four points in capital letters A, B and C and D on the original graph. Okay. Chosen four points. Good. Tsuboho, could you please record the value of the coordinates of your points in your table? Cindy, while Tsuboho is completing the table, can you mark and label the points you have chosen on the graph drawn on the transparency? I suggest you use lowercase letters. Excellent. Now please move the graph and the transparency three units upwards. And let's see what the new coordinates of those points are. Tsuboho, please record the new coordinates in your table as Sindiswa reads them off the graph. Okay, I've moved the transparency and now point A, which is 0 and 0, is now 0 and 3. Point B, which is 2 and 4, is now 2 and 7. Point C, which is 3 and 9, is now 3 and 12. And finally, point D, which is minus 2 and 4, is now minus 2 and 7. Great! By now we should realize that mathematics is all about looking for patterns. Can you see a pattern from the table? Sure! I see that the x values of the original points and the translated points are exactly the same, but the y values seem to have changed. Oh, look here, each one is exactly three more than the original value. And we move the graph up three points. Well done. Now I want to show you how we can use function notation to describe your observation. I'm going to modify this table. Let's start with this point, 2 and 4. Instead of writing down the y value 4, I'm going to write down f of 2. Let me try that. So 3 and 9 becomes 3 and f of 3. Excellent, you're getting it. Can you complete the table using function notation for all the other original points? OK, I'm done, but I'm not sure how this has helped us. Just wait and see how we describe the translated points. Cindy, do you have any suggestions? We noticed earlier that the x values hadn't changed. So why don't we just write those again? And what about the y values? Well, we said these were exactly the same as the original y values, but with three added. So why don't I just write 0 f of 0 plus 3 for the translated point of 0 f of 0. 2 f of 2 plus 3 for the next translated point and 3 f of 3 plus 3 for the translated point of 3 f of 3, and so on. Wow, Cindy, that's really a great observation. Cindy's observation has explained exactly what happens to this particular function when it was translated vertically by three units. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the table doesn't actually refer to any particular function, but rather to a general function f. So we can use the same translation on any function. Let me show you what I mean by using this computer program. All it does is to draw the graphs of the functions for us, leaving us to do the exploring. Here I define the function. In this case, f of x equals x squared, and the graph has already been drawn. Notice how the same four points that Sindiswa highlighted have been highlighted here. Now below f of x, I have a different function, which I have called g of x. 
Justice and Diswa noticed. We have to add some amount to the original function value to move the graph up. I've defined this function as g of x equals f of x plus a, and to start with a equals zero. What I can do now is to change the value of a by moving this dot along this line here. Or by pressing any one of the values below the line, these values represent the value of a. Can you predict what a would be if I want g of x to be the same as the translation you did on the transparency? Well, we moved the graph on the transparency up three units. From our table of values, we saw that we got f of x plus 3. So I guess your g of x will be the same as our translation when a equals 3. Well, let's see what happens. All I do is press this 3 here and there, g of x appears as, as it's changed from 0 to 3. Look, Sindiswa, it's doing just what we predicted. It's moving up. What if we changed a to 4? I guess the graph would move up one other unit. Go on, press 4, exactly as I predicted. Now the power of the computer program is that we can change the function from f of x equals x squared to any other function. This means that the graph will move up if we add a constant as we have been doing. I've reset a to 0, let's first change the function. Now we have a cubic function. What do you predict will happen if I make the value of a 3? It should slit upwards by 3 units. I agree. Convinced yet about the power of using function notation? Definitely. It really helped us to predict what happens to any function when it's translated. By the way, I noticed that the a values could also be set to minus 3 and others. Will that slide the graph down by 3 units? I've reset a to 0. We'll keep the function as it is. Now we'll press the a equals minus 3 button. I really love it when things work as predicted. And of course, that would be true for whatever function f of x is. Let's summarize what we have done. Vertical translation. The function g of x equals f of x plus a is a vertical translation of the function f of x by a units. The translation is up for a greater than zero and down for a smaller than zero. Karen has just shown us how to translate functions. Let's explore this a little more together. Given a function, f of x is equal to 2x plus 5. The table of values for this table is negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 3, 0, 5, 1, 7, 2, 9, 3, 11. And here is the plotted functions. Let us shift functions of f two units up. All the y values would move two units up, but the x values remain the same. The coordinates for f shifted two units up are negative 3, 1, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 5, 0, 7, 1, 9, 2, 11, 3, 13. Do you see how all the values in the last row are two more than in the second row? Here is the plotted graph. As you can see, it is two units higher than the original graph. The x coordinates have remained the same, but the y values have been moved two units up. The y intercept for f was at 5. The new intercept after the shift is now at 7. This shows us that all points have moved two units up. We can write the shift as f of x plus 2. Let's look at one more example. Here is the sketch of f of x equals to open bracket x minus 2 close bracket squared plus 4. The y-intercept is at 8 and the turning point is at 2, 4. Let's translate this graph 6 units down. Our new function has a y-intercept of 2 and a turning point of 2, negative 2. Once again, we see that all the x-coordinates stayed the same, but the y-coordinates changed. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to look at the task video for this section in the Functions and Inverses task video.
You'll also be able to learn more about functions on our website. That's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.